seven or eight, one of these two up here. But um, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about Texas fishing. Just had a little preview there from uh, Captain Aubrey Black down there in Baffin Bay and uh, had a blast down there. But we're going to be taking a look at uh, definitely some Texas fishing. Love it down there. We're going to look at the new Mogan Contest winners. And uh, I'm gonna, also going to be showing you three previews just for the live audience out there tonight. Something we've never done before, but you get to see three pre previews of shows coming up. And uh, you're also going to get to take a look at something that's pretty cool that it's going to be exclusive to you guys as well. <clears throat> is you're going to see how we get to throw the music in there. And our music, guys, if you haven't seen them, uh, we have a couple of videos. But we got wait till you see how we put the music to some of these shows. We got a Tarpon show that was absolutely incredible. We did the Marquesas. You'll see it without music and then with music. Uh, that's later on in the show. But uh, good to see everybody from Costa Rica. Who else we got out there? Where y'all from? Uh, South Texas, you guys back there. This one's definitely going to be for y'all. Uh, Upper Laguna Madre and Baffin Bay definitely coming up. Um, you saw I caught that fish just right there on one of my favorite baits. It's a DOA Cal. Got about 150,000 reasons why I like using that one. And each one of them has a picture of George Washington on it. So I uh, won a lot of money on that bait. Uh, caught a lot of fish on that bait. Everywhere I've ever used it, I've caught fish on it. So, um... Guess we can take a couple of questions, and then we can throw it to another uh, another video of uh, when we were wading. Actually, I'm sorry, we we're uh, with uh, Aubrey throwing the Morning Glory cow, and that was that dude right there. And uh, get the little camera on it, you can see that's the Morning Glory color. And just it's the Morning Glory is just a color. It's uh, it has a chartreuse tail on it with a black body. No matter if you're throwing the shrimp or if you're throwing the little. DOA paddle tail cow here and I like throwing that little 16th ounce jig head on there I know it looks kind of funny on there But that little 16th ounce jig head will make it sink really really slow in the water column And then when you rip it through the water You can actually feel that little tail waggle and right when you feel that tail waggle or wiggle uh, Waggle whatever you want to call it you stop you stop Reeling it and you just want to do a yo-yo Basically you want that bait swimming through the water going like this and it uh, it drives them nuts. But that's uh, that's the DOA Morning Glory cow. Um, and up after we get done with that, we'll show you how we throw that new DOA shrimp too. That uh, that was a pretty good one. But uh, oh, from Hawaii, Ohio, Melbourne, Tampa, Louisiana, South Texas. There you go, Mike. This one's for you guys out there. Uh, have you ever used the Paul Brown series lures for trout? Yes, I have. Um, great bait by Mirror Lure, uh, LNS Bait Company. You know, I'm glad they acquired that and didn't let it go away because that bait is one of the best I've ever used for big trout. Coral Springs, good to see all you guys out there. <coughs> braided line or mono, the first time I ever tied on braided line was, I think, we uh, we had already had a mono sponsor for the show, a mono line sponsor for the show. And I was fishing with Mark Nichols down in the Keys and he said, hey, try this stuff, it's brand new. So I tied it on and my first cast with it. I actually, I could feel it turning over uh, oyster shells and I've never looked back since. I've actually tried to use mono one time during a bass tournament at ICAST with all the bass fishermen and it was like fishing with a rubber band after fishing with uh, braid for so long. But the braid now, Seaguar Smackdown, uh, best stuff I've ever used. It's the thinnest, it feels, it's smoothest. You can't even feel it or hear it go through the eyes of your, gu the, the guides of your fishing rod. But uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, let's take a look at the uh, the Morning Glory DOA cow uh, working in Baffin Bay. Actually, it was working in Nine Mile Hole in the Upper Laguna Madre with Captain Sally Black. Check it out. Hey, we got some drag going, fellas. We got a little bit of drag action here. Sounds like a redfish. Feels like a redfish. Right on. Looks like a redfish. We knew there had to be one hog in Oh the yeah, there he oh, is. Oh man, he's a hog too, yes. The nine mile redfish oh, yeah. right there. We've drifted nine miles to catch this That's fish. That's right, we did. <laughs> That's an awesome fish too. Come here, Mr. Redfish. Very nice. He likes underneath this I'm scooter. right here for you, I'm just saying. I'm gonna come around. Oh my gosh. It takes a professional to do it. Like that. There he comes. <laughs> this, is, this is a hog from the hog hole, okay? Uh oh, oh no. You talk him into not going back there. He's like hanging out in that shadow. Mm hmm. Oh, 
Yeah. Awesome little fish. Oh yeah. It's actually a nine mile hole. Nine mile hole. And this would be South Laguna Madre? Uh, yes. Lower Laguna Madre? Well, it's actually on the... Uh, they got some pretty red fish down there in Texas, don't they? Um, Want to give a shout out. Let's see, Mike Underbrink giving a shout out to uh, the Warriors weekend in Port O'Connor this past weekend. They had over a thousand of our wounded warriors there. And uh, Bobby Dub, if you're in tonight, man, hey, what's up? One of our wounded warriors that we tried to do a show with up in Destin. And, uh, you know, we're going to come back up there this summer and get a redfish show with you. But one heck of a guy. Wait till you, wait till you see this guy's story. Um, unbelievable. That's all I got to say. Where do you see it? I just had to get a laugh from Mac Toon here. Have I ever uh, had a War Eagle boat? It's what I cut my eye teeth in in Cocoa Beach, basically. It was a 19-foot uh, fleet wing. Uh, by, uh, well, that was it was a fleet wing. It was named War Eagle. Sorry about, no, I never had a War Eagle boat then. <laughs> Bad one, just uh, realized that. Let's see. What's a good website to check the weather for offshore? Um, I use Wonderground, but make sure you're using one of the, one of their stations that's not behind a wall because most of the time they're, I don't know, just like every other weatherman out there, they're wrong. Even when, even when it's good weather, a lot of times they're wrong they'll predict bad weather and be good weather, but nobody ever hears about that one. Um, but the, I, I use Wonderground and I use the, um, the one on my Apple, uh, on my phone and just kind of make my own guesses from there. Um, Jessica, what's up? Glad to hear you like watching the shows. Ever catch tarpon in Texas? No, I haven't, but I've seen them there during the redfish tournaments when I was there. And uh, they look pretty easy to catch, but I was too focused in on trying to catch some redfish. So never did catch them in Texas, but yes, they, uh, they, they get some pretty big ones up there. More tuna episodes. Uh, I would love to do more tuna episodes. That means I get to have sushi more often, and everybody else loves those too. But we shall... Uh, we shall try to do some more tuna episodes. Uh, let's see. Kayak fishing. Just can't do it. I uh, hurt my back when I was a kid and can't sit over hunched over much. But uh, might do a paddleboard show here one day. The Lounge Boys. <laughs> Kenny Conley. Kenny Conley. Well, don't go away, Kenny. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. You're going snooking, huh? Well, save me a couple. I uh, love the graph on Weather Underground. Yeah, the graph, it works pretty good. It, uh, it's pretty accurate. Hopefully, it's going to be accurate tomorrow because we're going to go out and hopefully we're going to shoot a show with some dude that wears a big T on his, on, his, on, on his hat for one of his shows. Yes, I fished Apalachicola quite a bit. Won, uh, won a little money up that way just around the corner at Port Saint, in Port St. Joe. But, uh, yeah, I love fishing Apalachicola there as well. Uh, come back to Corpus. Hopefully be back there next year. Um, y'all got great fishing out there. We want to come down to Corpus and all the way down to Port Mansfield this time and do something down there, hopefully with those snook. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a show from snook, uh, from Texas showing snook, but it's always been from Florida or Costa Rica, someplace else where they live. Um, let's take a look at this new DOA shrimp that, uh, that Mark made. It's exclusive at Dick's right now for a couple more months. And then you're going to be able to find these little dudes everywhere. The one on the show came out of Mark's pocket, I think, because the eyes, <laughs> the eyes weren't painted on it. It had, you know, lint on it and everything else, but it was, uh, you know, it, it got the job done there in Texas and it was really windy. And that's something pretty unique about this bait. If you see the weight, it's an entirely different weight system in this shrimp and it will fly through the air really really good and uh you know it's a it's a it's a good size shrimp it makes the same sound as a as a shrimp in the water when you give it a twitch and here's how it works check it out all right sally i think i got one right here all right i think i don't know it's just a dark spot about 30 feet about 30 feet yeah it's just sitting there give it a shot when in doubt whip it out that's right Oh, great cast. He's got it. Fish on. Right on. I think that was a black drum. I just saw a little dark gray thing sitting up there and tossed to him. Or is it a sheep head? Nope, it's a black drum. Yep. A black drum, baby! The targeted species. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. 
They're meaner than they look. They are. I think they fight a lot harder when they're this size. At least they move a lot quicker. When you get those big 50, 60 pounders, they just stay about five feet away from the boat and pull and pull and pull. <sighs> Hello, dinner. And when they're that size right there, you can't tell the difference between them and a redfish. And that's perfect. That's the perfect size because you get a really nice hefty fillet and their meat is really white. And not full of worms sort of yet. Sort of like lobster meat. Nothing kinda, but butter, baby. Kind of <laughs> I know my camera guys were hating that show because we were weighed and we didn't have the beaver tails yet. But it would have been nice in the beaver tails. Even with that chop, we'd have been totally silent coming up there. Um, let's see. I'm going to come up to the Show Your Mogan contest. Um, uh oh, I don't have my notes. Oh, yeah. The Show Your Mogan contest. If y'all haven't seen these yet, uh, these are the new Ingle Cups. And it doesn't matter if you got, you know, anything in it or not and spill it. This lid actually will seal. And I've, I've actually had it, you know, full of my favorite uh, adult beverage. Had it spill over and it didn't spill because that screws on there. And that top, app, I mean, you got to push it in there to get it sealed. But we're giving this away tonight. Uh, if you've ever seen the, uh, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen these type of cups, they work excellent you have to fill them up with ice one time during the day and that's about it keeps ice all day long start it off with coffee and then put uh put your ice and your favorite beverage in there and you're good to go and we're going to give that away uh when we ask the trivia question and i guess we can do the trivia question now let's keep going see who comes up with it let's okay keep let's keep going uh one of my you know one of the most i guess mystique places that i've that i've ever wanted to fish uh saltwater is Baffin Bay. When I first got together with Kevin Shaw from Stiffy Push Bowls, he told me about this area down there called Baffin Bay where they had these prehistoric worm rocks and all kinds of stuff down there. Just big trout, big redfish, all sorts of stuff going on there. And But the thing he said, he said, it's always windy down there. And every time I've been down there, the wind has been blowing more than 30 miles an hour and we just could not get it done. But uh, we had a great morning. I was expecting double digit trout. That's what Baffin Bay is known for. Uh, they needed a little bit more rain to get that fresh water influx in there to get them really turned on. But we had a great day fishing with Aubrey and uh, making as far casts as we can with top dogs and bringing them back. And it was like almost every cast we were catching a fish, at least getting a blow up on it anyway. But check this early morning stuff out. It's beautiful. This Having a free cool. meal. Two of them looking at it. <laughs> there he is. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. You couldn't stand it when I Come did on, that. baby. Hit it again. Oh, thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> god dang it. Still on it, still there. There he is. There he is. <laughs> I like it when you can talk him in. Baffin Bay, brother, you gotta love it. Coaxed him into eating. That's a good one. Well, what do we say? They're all good. Some are just better than others, brother. It's a redfish. I thought it was a trout. Well, it's a Baffin Bay redfish. All right, we're gonna, uh, let's let's give, actually let's uh, take some questions first and then I'm gonna give away the Show Your Mogan contest winners. And the contest winners today are gonna get a Top Dog and a Miradine. Oh, that one too. What's that? Oh, and this one right here is the one I just used on the show, on um, that clip you just saw. It was the Top Dog, this is a Top Dog Junior, but that's a color that, uh, that I come up with a couple of years ago. Um, and it just worked great. It's um, it kind of looks like a uh, if you ever seen a mullet with an orange belly after it's been in, in the uh, in the tannic water a little bit. That's kind of what they look like. But that's what we were tossing there. But what we're giving away today is a Miradine and a uh, and a top dog. And this one has the sea eyes in it. This is pretty cool looking little bait. It's got a different little different rattle chamber in it. But uh, two great baits I've used and caught a lot of fish with. Um, Let's see. I guess the first one is going to go to Crystal Shouter. Uh, nice trout. You know, one of my favorite fish to catch right there. So, Crystal, 
you get to go catch some more trout we're going to send you the one with the sea eyes there this is the baby redfish and uh make sure you get with Mr. Producer Man, and uh, I send, send him, I guess, do you have her info? Email at Patrice. Yeah, email Patrice at AddictedFishing.com, and uh, we'll send you that uh, top dog right out. And uh, happy birthday to Kenny Conley. He's been sending in nice snook pictures for about three weeks now straight. Uh, it's his birthday, so Kenny, we're going to send you the uh, the Miradine. You're going to love this thing. I'm sure you've used them before, but uh, Kenny, happy birthday. Appreciate you sending them all them great pictures of the snook. Keep them coming. Never know. You can be a double winner on this uh, on this contest. So uh, let's take some more questions. Uh, how do you use a DOA shrimp? I just saw that one before it went off. Is uh, the slower the better? If you think you're moving it too slow, slow it down even more, and uh, kind of make it look like a shrimp that, that swims around in the day, which is one kind of just crawls on the bottom, and when he gets spooked. You know, he's sitting there going along the bottom like this. And, you know, when he gets spooked, he'll pop up off the bottom and just drift right back down. That's basically how I work it. That or I'll move it real slow and steady, pop it up, and let it come back down and just keep it moving. Just keep it moving, moving, moving. Don't ever stop it. Uh, let's see. I live in Stewart, Florida, and I can't catch anything next month. If you go fish underneath any of the bridges there, the snook should start staging up to head out uh to spawn uh usually starts the first part of the uh, end of june may Jul and end of july and uh let's see osprey show another bill dance show please tune in i don't know when bill's going to edit it but tomorrow i'm going to be filming a show with bill we're going out king fishing and uh hopefully get him hooked up on a couple smokers and watch his drag explode we'll see what happens <laughs> that should be good uh, best fishing in the world. I can't catch anything. Uh, go to Venice, Louisiana. If you can't catch anything in Venice, Louisiana, going with the guides there, you might as well hang up fishing. That's all I got to say. I mean, it's uh, one incredible place. Sports in paradise. Um, I know Kenny will kill them at the dam. Oh, he's a damn, he's a damn fisherman, huh? All right. Way to go, Kenny. I always knew you were a damn fisherman. A damn fisherman. <laughs> Big fan of the show for years. What spinning rod and wheel would you recommend for sharks in the Keys? Check out a show we did with Tony Melton last year. We land almost any bull shark out there that swims. I don't know what it'll do with a big, you know, 12, 14 foot hammerhead, but it's the new, it's the new offshore series from Wright McGill. It's uh, the big flats blue offshore one. And they can will... get the link in the description of this video. Oh, you can get the link to that rod in the description of the video. Just got that informed to me. So that's cool. Uh, do another Marlin show. Been a long time since we've done a Marlin show. Uh, dirty water in Titusville area. Hate to hear that, Ashford. Uh, let's see. Just caught your first kingfish yesterday out of your kayak. I bet that was fun, Mako. Uh, my son just caught his first kingfish uh, day before yesterday. About a 35-pound smoker. It was nice. It took him about 45 minutes to get it in on the 8-footer. Florida in the summer. Southwest Florida in the summertime, snook. snook. Yeah, snook everywhere. And you can also get the uh, the little Goliath grouper that hang out underneath the mangroves there, too. They're pretty fun to catch, and they're a, a nice little tug of war when you get them on a, on a snook rod. When's the best time of day to fish for redfish? Um, I hate to say it and be a smart aleck about it, but when they're hungry. I mean, you can... Uh, when they're up tailing, usually you can tell when they're turned on. The little tips of their tail are nice and green. Um, like in the Indian River, Banana River Lagoon system over there, you don't want to leave fish to find fish because over there there's not anything that will trigger a bite. But uh, usually on the tide changes is where you really get, you know, a peak bite. Uh, so look at the tide changes. Sometimes it's, you know, you got to figure out what the fish are doing in the area that you're fishing. It could be halfway through the tide bite or it could be the first start of the tide. You never know. You just got to get out there and figure it. Once you find them, then figure them out. Mike wants more buggy whip shows. More buggy whip shows, Mike. Well, you got one coming up from the Marquesas. We went four for six on uh, uh, not any huge tarpon, but all, you know, in the up to about the 75-pound range. Had a great time fishing down there. Captain Jared Sear, if you know him. Uh, we got a clip coming up. It's going to be raw footage. It's, uh, if you've t just turned, tuned in, we're going to show you basically the raw footage without any music. And then we're going to show you how our music guy basically watches the show, 
plays to it. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. He, uh, if you've ever heard of Frank Zappa, he's there. There's a band out there called Bogus Pomp that he plays in, and he's their Frank Zappa. I mean, Frank Zappa's all over the all over the neck of the guitar. Incredible. Um, let's see, salty surprise coming up, huh? Speaking of Tony Melton, we uh, went down in the Keys and did another show with Tony. And uh, we had a little surprise down there at uh, one of my favorite fish to catch, especially in the shallow water down there. Uh, best bait for women, Jonathan, if you ain't figured that one out yet, then uh, I can tell you how to go catch a bonita. <laughs> Let's see. Salty surprise. Let's see. coming up. It's going to air this Friday coming up. And, uh, you know, you saw the show last year with Tony. I think it was his first time doing a TV show. He was a little bit nervous, and he opened up this time. He did good. But uh, check out what, uh, what, we, what we thought was something and turned into something else. And uh... <laughs> He's like, no, I'm going to get behind you. Jesus, I'm going to bum rush it. <laughs> oh, Cobias! Four Cobias! I got one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Four Cobias came up. How about that? Decent huh? ones, decent ones. Playing with a shark. Playing with a shark, and Cobias come up. Always. Gotta love Just it. like me to be messing around and let you get all the good ones. I know one of the camera guys here, I forgot which one it was, saying they wanted some fresh fish. So. Oh. Well, let's provide. Let's see if the old 7-9 ain't sure right McGill Flats blue or doer. I'm gonna get another bait ready because you know as well as I do that there might be one following him. Or two or, or the, seven or, or the other three. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you're gonna have to tune in Friday to see what that fish is gonna be because it wasn't what we thought it was. And uh, it sure took off and fought it. I mean, I fought that fish for like 15 minutes, I think, before we knew what it was. But uh, up next, we're going to show you basically some raw footage uh, of the Marquesa show. And then we're going to give you a little sneak peek of how we put our music together. And it's, uh, it's pretty incredible to watch uh, Jerry Outlaw uh, play this guitar and, and watch the show and play the music. And uh, we got another guy, Bill Ursham, out there. He's incredible at mixing and playing the drums and all sorts of stuff. I'm glad I fish, and I'm glad they do what they do because they do it well. But... Um, Check it out. This is Marquesas on the fly, some raw footage uh, with the buggy whip. Mr. Tarpon, show me your face. God, this boat is quiet, isn't it? Boat is dead silent. Quiet, rides good, super dry. Well, you know it's quiet when you can hear the camera boat slapping 30 yards away. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a group coming there, Blair. Coming at 11 o'clock there, you see him coming? Yep, you're right on him. I got him. About 100 feet out right now, hold on. All right, go ahead and start your shot. One more and then drop it. Perfect. Strip. Easy, easy. Keep stripping. Keep stripping, he's looking at it, there. he's looking at it. Oh, come on, come on, get it, get it, strip, 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 strip. There he right is. Right there by the boat, buddy. Oh my God, look at that heat. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. Go on, baby, go. <clears throat> that is awesome, Blair. That's what you got to love in the Florida Keys. Wait till you see that show. And I can't wait to hear the music soundtrack. The, uh, the little soundtrack you're going to hear coming up. Has the show's aired? What's that? Camps. Has uh, aired? Two yes. weeks from now. Okay. Two weeks from now, you'll see... Uh, basically, the, the show, it's called King for a Day with Chris Camps again. We went out kingfishing, and this is, this is Jerry Outlaw basically playing the music uh, while he's watching the show. And it's, it's pretty cool how it all finally falls together. And uh, we'll hit that now. And it's phone video, so it's... Well, it's phone video, so, you know, people like me and you don't matter, but the producers out there can't stand grainy video. But it's, here's what it looks like.
Hey, man, that's, that's what makes this show so unique and so different, man. Those guys have been with us since 1998 doing it. So it, it comes like a second nature to them. I'm sure they're sick of watching me because they, you know, they got fishing poles. And right now, hey, instead of right, yeah, there, Mac, we'll give you a Mac tune. We'll give you a shout out. What's up? Nice emojis there. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, wait, no, can you imagine what they're going to do with that tarpon show? I, you know, I want to be in, sitting in on that one when they, uh, when they put the music to that one. But um, that was pretty cool. Uh, what's the best place to catch snook? Griffin 3003 wants to know. Um, if you want to catch a lot of numbers of snook down the Everglades, Chuckalusky, Everglades City, any of the guides down there, just get down there and go fish, man. You'll, you, you will catch. That's like catching redfish in, in Louisiana. Uh, saw a question up there earlier. What's the deepest I've ever caught redfish in? It's been about 55 foot of water. And unfortunately, when you bring them up that way, if you don't have a vent tool, it's very tough to get them back down and get them to survive. So... Um, don't recommend catching them that deep. There's plenty of them shallow. Uh, do I use butterfly jigs every once in a while? They tend to, <laughs> they tend to catch what I don't like catching much on a spinning rod and that's AJ's, uh, pretty good with the grouper when the grouper are hitting, but there's so many red snapper out on Pelican flats. Now, um, that's all you catch. That is all you catch. It's unbelievable. Um, Best setup for a beginner fly fisherman. Um, if you can go to Dick's and find our fly rods, it's a very it's a very cheap fly rod. It's like 120 bucks. Uh, the fly reel, uh, it's a little on the expensive side, but it's a nice fly reel. It runs 200 bucks. So you're looking at 220 dollars uh, for the fly reel. Oh, wait a right minute. Where? I think there's a fly rod right there. Oh yeah, they come in the cases right there, back behind me. You can see them right there. Yeah, but the fly reel. And the fly reel's right there, and it runs 200. So you're looking at 230 bucks. You got a good uh, fly rod and set up. Then another 80 bucks to rig it up with backing and fly line. And it's it's not cheap fly fishing. It's fun to do when the fish are biting, but it's not a cheap uh, not a cheap sport. Um, top top dog Blake fish top dog versus top dog junior. Um, if you want to catch big fish, I mean, if you want to just target big big trout, use the biggest baits that you can. Period. Once a, once a trout reaches over six or seven pounds, 95% of his diet is other fish, and it's usually big fish. They'll eat once or twice a week. And uh, so I like throwing the biggest baits I can for them. What's that? Oh, the trivia question. All right, Sally Black, uh, they're in Texas. They won't eat a mullet, but they will, <laughs> they will devour some black drum. Uh, she had a nickname for black drum on the show. If you watch the show... Sally Black had a nickname for Black Drum. What was it? And we're going to give you something to keep your drinks hot or cold in. It's the new Ingle Cup. So uh, we'll keep watching the comments here. I'll do a few more questions. But uh, what was the name for Sally Black's nickname for Black Drum? Best fly for snook or tarpon. Um, if they're eating greenies, pilchards, anything like that, anything that's a, um, that's a, that's a pilchard imitation. Um, you know, just key in on what they're eating is say, use the same mentality that you would if you're throwing lures at them. You know, if, if there's finger mullet everywhere, would you throw a shrimp in there? No, you'd throw a finger mullet in there. That's something that looks like an injured finger mullet. And that's what you, because they're used to catching that. Uh, what's that? Big ugly. Big ugly. <laughs> no, nope, not big ugly, Sal. If y'all get on YouTube, you can punch up the show and it's right at the end of the show. I think it'd take you a minute though. Here we go. Nope, no puppy drum. Sorry, Osprey. Keep them coming. What's the biggest speckled trout I have ever caught? It was 14 and a half pounds, uh, 34 and a half inches long out of the Banana River. Let her go. Big uglies. Nope, not big uglies. Best fish to fight and what lure? Well, check out a little clip coming up. I don't know where it's going to air this year, but we just got back from the Keys. And I got wrecked by about a 60, I want to call it a 65. It felt like a 300 pound AJ, but it was probably only about 65 pounds on the spinning rod. And uh, dinner, you're getting close there, AJ. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had a good time doing that. It had something to do with lobster. Mm, kind of. Any shows outside the country? Not, not this year. 
Come on, gotta keep. Gotta, uh, what's the question? What is the nickname for Sally Black's, uh, what she calls Black Drum? So Almost go, gave it away there. So go watch Sally's World. Yeah, Sally's World on YouTube. Um, check it out. It's right at the end. Has something to do with what I like to do with fish after I catch them. How's that for a hint? Um, when trout eat once or twice a week, do you mean they feed or just eat one or two fish a week? Uh, Hunter, they eat one or two fish a week. I've caught them with, I've caught uh, eight pound trout with 14 inch mullet. Basically, that's the only thing that's in their stomach. And you can tell it was in their stomach for like a week. I always kind of... <laughs> Gotta look what's in there, but it, uh, sorry, Tyler. All right. Well, maybe we need another trivia question. <laughs> They're still watching the show. Still watching the show. Black grill, blackened. I love doing that to them, but mm -mm. <laughs> All right. That's my backup question. Ever fished Honeymoon? Is that Honeymoon Island? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, probably Honeymoon Island. Yes, I have. Uh, and South Padre Island, yes, I have. How big is my Skeeter boat? Sage wants to know. Uh, 24 footer. It has the uh, the top on it from Omni Marine down there. That uh, It's got a driving station up top that is incredible for spotting fish. Where's, where's the best fishing spot you recommend for redfish? Um, Texas got some great red fishing. Uh, Louisiana is probably hands down uh, one of the best red fishing spots in the world. Ah, Tyler, just kidding. <laughs> Called you out, my brother. Uh, fillets, fillets. Let me call her and check. Go ahead, call her, Ricky. Cockroach Bay this time of year. Okay. All right. We went with Captain Sally Black. Here's another, uh, you can answer this one on the trivia question. What is the name of Captain Sally Black and Captain Audrey, Aubrey Black's Lodge? It's going to be quick. Yeah, this one ought to be quick. How do you, I eat my redfish? Love them on the half shell and I love them. I chunk them up and fry them as well. Yeah. That would DA 300 snook. Don't know when the new Sabaloses are coming out, but hopefully soon. I uh, I talked to the guys at Wright McGill two days ago about them, and um, still waiting. I'm waiting, just like everybody else. You ever going to fish in Mississippi? Just talked about that just a few minutes ago, and uh, might come out there next year. What's that? Just laughing at the answer, sorry. Oh. Uh, Lodge. Uh, no, Caesar. <laughs> there you, oh that's close close very close dallas cowboys <clears throat> my favorite conventional reel um i like the little avid style reels that you can put like 23 pounds of drag on those things and uh they're tough to destroy uh we've got a couple of prototypes i've been using that right mcgill sent me there you go osprey you got it you will be the owner of the new Ingle Cup, and this is the brand new size. I don't think you can even find this one in the in the stores yet. But uh, once again, it's just like those other cups out there, but better. It's got rubber on the bottom of it, so it's not going to slide. And if it does happen to tip over with that screw on top, and that, that it's got a rubber seal or a silicone seal gasket there, it's not going to spill. But we're going to send you that one, Osprey. Make sure you send your. Uh, your contact address and all that kind of good stuff to patrice at addictivefishing.com and we will go and send you that uh, that mug right there. Pretty good stuff. Show Aaron in two weeks. Let's see. We got a clip coming up uh, that we're going to show you. This, this show is going to air in two weeks. We went out with Captain Chris Camps again. Uh, went out king fishing. So I'm going to take Bill Dance out to do tomorrow. So uh, we'll see what happens with Bill. Hopefully he has a good a day as I did out there with Captain Chris. But this is just a little preview for your YouTube viewers out there. Check out Captain Chris Camps, King for a Day. Oh, I got a oh, hit. Got a hit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There he goes. There he goes again. Let Rodney the Rod Holder nice. take him. Oh, he's smoking it. Oh, he's going. Oh, that's, this could be a good one, Blair. This could be a good one. 
And I got smoked too, something just ripped my bait off. Might want to take me out of gear. Yeah, let's do that. Holy moly. Easy there, buddy. Headed to Texas, it looks like, huh? Going to Mexico. <laughs> you can just spot lock us there if you want. Spot lock us. Spot lock. And we are stuck. And you hear on shows when people say, spot lock it, spot lock it. It's the feature that Minn Kota's got on there that's an electronic anchor. It's got a GPS right in the head of the trolling motor and uh, locks onto the satellites and keeps you within about a five foot radius. One of the coolest features of a trolling motor I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, and it helps us so much, especially when we're tarpon fishing. We don't have to worry about throwing that anchor ball and chasing the fish down. If the fish move off, we can just get off the spot lock, move to where they are, set ourselves in position there. So we'd have been here about 30 minutes and three <laughs> kingfish. <laughs> we can't hardly get a, a decent drift or a decent troll here before we're getting smashed by a kingfish. Seems to be doing pretty decent. Well, let's see, had a couple questions as that kingfish thing was coming up. Name of the fish was not, but okay, we're gonna tell you the name, uh, it's Captain Sally. She called them black yum. That's just what she called them because they are tasty when they're that size. I always say when they lose their stripes, they start to get the worms in there and they're not that good to eat anymore. But if they still have their stripes and they're over the legal possession limit, they are tasty, better than any redfish you taste out there. They eat the same thing. Um, Osprey won it. Osprey won it. Who was it, whoever was asking that? Uh, the rigs I used to catch King on, it, it was just like little number six wire that we had rigged up with uh, the either one eagle claw hook in the front and a trocar, a single trocar in the back, or with two uh, two little eagle claw um, treble hooks, one in the back, one in the front. Osprey. Uh, Osprey. Ever see King's breach completely out of the water? The very first one on that show, did, we were sitting there talking about it. The very first kingfish must have heard us what we were talking about and did it. But uh, that uh, that was pretty cool, especially right there when we were talking about it. Hook placement on a mud minnow to get them to swim up toward the surface. Um, I have no idea how you would get a mud minnow to come to the surface. We would always use, if I wanted to keep them up off the bottom, we would use clear bobbers. Uh, that way the fish wouldn't see the bobber. It was just a clear bobber and it held it up off the bottom. Uh, but I don't, I would not know how to hook a mud minnow to do that. Any tips on bass fishing? Uh, after tomorrow, I'll get a few more tips, but, uh, I'm not a bass fisherman. Watch Bill Dance or Roland Martin. Scott Martin's got a great show out there that, uh, you know, you can learn a lot about bass fishing from Scott's show. I like his show a lot. Uh, what setup do you recommend for oversized snook near structure? Uh, lockdown drags an 80 pound braid with, uh, with as big a leader as you can use to still produce the hit and lock down the drag. Uh, start off with like 80 pound leader. Uh, if they're not hitting it with 80, drop it to 60. Not hitting 60, drop it to 50. Uh, but you got to find that happy medium where you're still getting eaten, but not breaking off on every, uh, every drop of a bait. Uh, ever gonna fish for king salmon uh, or coho would love to i would definitely want to make it to alaska one of them was something on my bucket list i definitely want to do um do the sabalos reels have new sabalos more line capacity no about the same and those might not be the ones that come out so we'll have to see you might find something better um, biggest trout out of trinity bay trinity bay i caught some nice ones in there i think the biggest one is about eight pounds um, got some nice ones in there. Is the water in the Indian River Mosquito Lagoon still super dirty from the algae bloom? It was terrible for uh, a few months ago. Uh, it's clearing up a little bit over there. I just was over there this past weekend, went across the causeways. We went out in the ocean, but the river looked pretty good from the causeways. Uh, saw a couple of schools of mullet. Uh, last weekend, I did make it out in the Banana River and saw thousands of mullet. Uh, and, and they weren't dead. So they were, all, they were all alive and jumping and doing well. Uh, saw a couple of redfish and uh, a couple of trout, but uh, didn't see much else. But a lot of, lot of bait. More trivia questions. Maybe we'll do that on the next, uh, on the next AF Live. And speaking of the next AF Live, uh, we might be doing it from iCast. So um, if y'all have ever heard about iCast, or if you haven't heard about iCast, 
It's the largest fishing show in the world out there. Every, it used to be in Las Vegas, but now they brought it to Orlando because it can hold more people and just a lot more people come to Florida for this show. But it's the largest fishing show that you can imagine. It's like, you know, growing up going to Disney World, man. I feel like a little kid every time I'm there. All the new stuff, the new, um, all the new reels, rods, anything coming out is debuted in, at ICAST. And hopefully we'll be able to make a, uh, make a live show from there. Uh, new episode starts uh, this Friday. Uh, we got, uh, you just saw a couple of, uh, couple of videos from them that we had a, we had a ball shooting, had a ball shooting them, but, um, do a couple more questions and I think we're about out of time, ain't we? Yeah, I got to get back and do some kingfish rigs for, uh, uh, if y'all didn't catch, I'll be with the Tennessee man tomorrow, Mr. Bill Dance. We're going out for doing one of his saltwater shows and hopefully gonna, hopefully gonna make his real scream. <clears throat> more freshwater shows like trout fishing in Montana or Colorado Caesar I would love to do that um just don't I uh, don't know how many people would be really enthused about seeing that um I, you know when I started doing the show I like you know I wanted to do th shows like I wanted to see on TV and we've done that and it's been pretty successful uh, would love to go out and do it but I'm just not sure for if fun. it yeah for fun I'll go out there for fun and do it no problem but I'm saltwater at heart. Uh, what did I fish for when I was in South Padre Island? It was redfish on the inside. Uh, just pre-fishing for redfish tournaments. Have I ever gone surf fishing? Yes, I have. We actually have a line of surf rods out there from 8 foot all the way to 11 foot. And for Pompano, I mean, you can cast a, a, a little 3 ounce pyramid sinker out of sight. Literally out of sight, especially if you're using that Seaguar, like using 30-pound test. It, you load it up, and it, it'll cast 100 yards. We're going to be fishing the, the fall mullet run with Black Tip H and the surf rod. Okay, y'all check that out. We'll be doing the uh, the Black Tip H. We're going to do a video with him with the uh, surf rods. And this fall. this fall, show you how it puts a whooping on them. Uh, my biggest tarpon, you got to check it out. It was called The Tarpon. Go to the website, uh, look at it, look for it. It's called The Tarpon just the tarpon it was uh i've had flip look at it i've had a couple of the big guys out there stews looked at it several times and they're all saying in round buck 80 uh caught it on fly unbelievable fish um but it's called the tarpon with barry meyer and the funniest thing is though when uh, after we released this fish um i got i told barry i said man i still got the shakes and barry, the funniest thing he's just like I still got the willies myself. You got to check that out. But that's that stuck after 15 years. But it was pretty cool. Um, do a couple more questions, and then we're gonna hang it up until uh, I cast. And uh, just make sure you tell everybody to subscribe to the channel. That way, when we do come back on live, you'll know when we're gonna come back on. Uh, the contest, show your mugging contest. We're gonna keep that going. You'll be notified if you win every week. Two weeks. every two weeks and uh don't forget on the youtube live site that you're watching right now we release the new show every monday uh so if you haven't seen them uh over the weekend when they air the following monday they get released on the website 7 p.m at 7 p.m so you can tune into that do i plan on fishing texas with mr nichols that'd be fun that would be in his home state um Trophy trout episode like Stuart with Martin Nichols, dude. We've been trying to do that. Let's see. That was with Osprey. Osprey, we've been trying. The bite just hasn't been consistent enough to get down there and do it. Uh, Martinez, 7775, ever fished in Costa Rica? Yeah, I have. I caught my rooster fish down there. Uh, beautiful place down there. We stayed in Hako and went, went all the way down south to, um, can't think of it, but yes, fish Costa Rica. Beautiful place. Everybody wants to see more bloopers, Osprey. I just don't mess up that much anymore. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, in, that's in the finale, Osprey. No way. I'll be in the finale. Yeah, the finale. Hunter Warren, when do you use leaders? Every single time my lure goes in the water. Because I say it uh, on the show, if my leader brings one more bite during the show or if it helps me catch one more fish by you know, rubbing up against a pylon and not, not breaking because of the abrasion resistance of the cigar, um, it's done its job for me. So every single time a lure goes in the water, a live bait goes in the water, I've got cigar on. Uh, even when I'm using for kingfish with, uh, you know, with wire leader, I'll always tie my mono to the, uh, to the swivel. So every single time. 
Best way to target drum in the Space Coast Flats? Seems like a lot now. Um, we always said, you know, use the deadest, nastiest, smelliest shrimp that you can. Leave them out in the sun and let them stink up for a day. And th that's what black drum love to eat. But uh, we're going to call it now. I got to go get ready, twist up some more leaders for Captain Bill or for Mr. Bill Dance tomorrow. And uh, camping in Sebastian Park in two weeks. Best lures for my arsenal. Um, oh, God. Let me see. Lures for your arsenal. Sebastian and Inlet. Get the... That one right there. The bait buster. Looks like a natural mullet. Uh, the mullet run's going on right now. You can bump that on the bottom and catch... Um, yeah, the flounder's going off right down there now too. So you can uh, get flounder on that as well. Uh, live mullet with a flounder rig. Do that. And uh, what label do I use for the flats? I love using the Premier. Uh, Seaguar Premier, Hunter. What's that? The premiere, is that just the... Uh, yeah, that's the premiere right there. But that right there is what I use on the flats. Uh, when it's cold, I use this. Um, I'll, I'll use the regular blue label when it's when it's hot because it's a little bit more um, not as limber as this stuff. This stuff is real limber, easy to tie knots with, and all that. Guys, we're gonna call it for the night. I hope y'all enjoyed uh, enjoyed tonight's live show. And I guess we'll see you hopefully right at iCast or right before iCast. Like I said, make sure you tune in or make sure you tell everybody to tune in and sign up uh, because the announcement will go out when the next live episode is. And when it does, we'll see you then.